Welcome everybody back to the Nuggets of Gold podcast and YouTube channel. Today we're going to be previewing the 49ers Seahawks game. Now I think this is always going to be a very, very fun matchup. Right now, both these teams coming off pretty tough losses for the 49ers. It's a loss where, you know, Aaron Rodgers carves them up at the end and they looked really, really bad in the first half. Like the Niners looked terrible last week in the first half. And honestly, terrible against the Eagles in the first half as well. So two games where you start out really, really slow playing a very, very hungry team in Seattle that it, they're they're potentially going to go down to one and three if they lose this game. And they're going to be in a very, very tough spot then. We all know how great the NFC West has been, especially this year and in years prior, how strong these rosters are. The Rams looked really, really good in a huge win against the Bucks last weekend. So, you know, a lot of pressure for both these teams to go out and get a win. Um, Aiden, what's just your overall feelings heading into this into this game against the Seahawks yeah I think you you brought up a really good point it's a division game it's Seattle nobody knows what to expect we're early enough in in the season that both of these teams haven't made it abundantly clear who they are Niners lost a tough game to the Packers who were in the NFC title game last year the Seahawks have lost to the Titans who were in the playoffs playoffs last year and the Vikings who Mike Zimmer came out and said that it was the best offensive performance that they've had since he's been there. So don't know how much of a fluke that was. Um, so it's still early enough that I don't feel super confident picking the winner of this game. Every division game like from from the, the jump is, is going to be tough to choose, but the fact that it's Niners, Seattle, and there's so many question marks. Um, like Niners are a three-point favorite. I feel like that seems pretty fair but I think either team could definitely win this game. Yeah, I mean, looking at how – I'd say looking at how Seattle's defense has performed through these first three weeks, and if you look at, like, the roster, it's really, really thin. I would have expected to be going into this game and really thinking the 49ers could, could be great on offense. But, unfortunately, the offense is incredibly stagnant right now, and a lot of that can be attributed to Jimmy Garoppolo's lack of spreading the football down the field. Um, if you guys want to look at it, I don't know if they're called spray charts. I don't know what you would call them. I know in baseball, spray charts, like where your guy hits the ball. But if you look at Jimmy Garoppolo's throw chart, I guess that's what it is. Um, it's pretty bad. Everything is right by the line of scrimmage or right across the middle of the field. And for the Seahawks, look at, looking at where they really struggle, it's outside a corner, especially with Trey Flowers. He has got absolutely picked apart. And then it's on that defensive line and then and in terms of pass rush. But their defense is pretty solid up the middle. You have Bobby Wagner and Jamal Adams. So if the way that you're going to beat the Seahawks, if the only way that you can move the ball on offense is across the middle of the field, this is a really bad matchup. This is not a good matchup. And the 49ers have the wideouts to go outside and win those matchups. But Jimmy Garoppolo has not been able to get the ball outside. And so that's my biggest concern heading into this game. Whoever's on Trey Flowers, he's going to be open. He's going to be open down the field. Go back, watch that Vikings game, and oh my, are Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen absolutely cooking Trey Flowers? It was brutal. Now, I don't, I don't think the duo of Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk is there, but that's it. That I mean, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk are a very, very formidable duo. Debo Samuel, right so far this year, we our last episode on these guys has been amazing. Brandon Ayuk was, he had a hamstring injury, you know, came out slow, but last week, four catches, had a touchdown. You know, he's starting to flash who he is again. Not really concerned about him. He's, he's also got open, too. That's the other thing. It's like he's still getting open in these routes. But that's where I'm most concerned because normally, and like, for example, for the Vikings game, that was a strength that they were able to exploit is outside. And it's going to be tough for the 49ers to do that, I think. Are, are you there with me, Aiden? Yeah, um, Jimmy has not seen it, so it's hard. Like we we haven't seen it from from Jimmy, so it's hard for me to say this is definitely gonna happen. Um, but the biggest point of concern for me is the fact that we are not able to push the the Packers around at all. Um, that was something that Matt and I both thought going into the game that we, we were gonna be able to run the ball. Um, and honestly, kind of a silver lining, we were not able to run the ball. We had to rely on on Jimmy we probably had no business being competitive in in that game and at the end of it against the packers like we probably should have won like that's that's what it kind of boils down to which is super interesting um 
So I expect us to beat the Seahawks, but Russell Wilson early in the season, like he's always played, played well. Um, the Seahawks are first in, in first half scoring and last in, in second half scoring, which is kind of the opposite that we've seen from, from the Niners. They've started slow, finished fast. Seattle has been the complete opposite so far. Um, and like everybody, the, the Niners are going to want to keep Wilson in the pocket. That kind of goes without saying, and they've struggled with that. But that kind of gets blown out of proportion, too. I feel like everybody struggles with that. That's why Russell Wilson, Kyler, Lamar, that's why they're, they're so good. Um, but that's what it's going to come in. That's what it's going to come down to. Uh, I think Matt and I talked before the show. The Niners are 2-16 and 16 against the Seahawks since the 2014 NFC Championship game. That's horrible. Shanahan is two and six. Like this is this is the team that he has not been able to to consistently beat. He's beat the Rams. He's beat the Packers. He's beat the Cardinals pretty much. Um, so I I want to see Shanahan go in his bag. Maybe we'll see more more Trey Lance. Maybe he'll do something new uh, to to try to get a jump on this on the Seattle team. Yeah, I like that you bring that up. I mean, it's definitely a, a spot, and I think a lot of it is. Like I was saying, like defensively, the scheme for the Niners, it's tough when you're only throwing the ball across the middle because that's where that's how Seattle wins games. Um, the other part, the other area where they win games is that passing offense. Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf. Now Tyler Lockett is banged up, but I think he's going to play. He practiced a little bit. Um, he's practiced a little bit this week. He's been limited, I believe. Um, but looking at this team, if the 49ers can get to Russell Wilson, then they're going to be in good hands. Now, that's the problem is that getting to Russell Wilson is incredibly difficult. I mean, we've seen how much he extends plays. Now, the interesting part to me is on that side of the football, the 49ers, the area that they've struggled in is when teams have neutralized their pass rush. And so what a lot of teams, especially the Packers, have have done is getting the ball out in less than two seconds and moving down the field very, very quickly. My big question about this game is that's not really the Seahawks like mojo right there. Like They're usually going to be a – we're going to take deep shots down the field. So I think defensively it's going to be, are they able to get those deep shots going? Who's playing corner for the 49ers? That's the other big question. They got banged up last game, and when Dante Johnson was on Devontae Adams, he had no chance. Frankly, had no chance at all. Um, so it's going to be a big deal, and this is so odd to say, but it's going to be a big deal if Josh Norman is able to suit up. One thing I will say, Aiden, I don't know if you've seen these, Drake Kirkpatrick is now a 49er, and he might be active. When he has guarded Tyler Lockett, the man has got absolutely cooked. Last year, I think he gave up 200 yards to Tyler Lockett and, like, three touchdowns. So I don't want to see him on the field either. Um, I would like to see Emmanuel Mosley, Diamador Lenore, and Josh Norman at corner. Um, K1 Williams, Jason Brett are both out. No, Jason Brett's out for the year, but K1's out for a little bit. Um, but those three at corner, totally fine. But there's not a ton of depth there. So that's going to be another big question mark. Um, Josh Norman has looked good, especially in coverage than, than prior years for sure. Um, and he got banged up last game. He had a lung contusion and had basically internal bleeding. So he's expecting to play, though. So it's kind of, it's kind of crazy considering how significant of an injury he had last week. Um, but he's played really good so far in a 49ers uniform. Granted, it's about a, about a game and a half. Um, but I don't know. What what do you think about that? Are you concerned about the how thin they are at corner? Definitely, definitely concerned. I'm gonna give you a hot take and and then a question. Hot take, Josh Norman is a top five most important niner this year. It's a bit of a hot take. Uh and then question, would you rather see Dre Kirkpatrick or or Dante Johnson on the field? I know it's both not not awesome options. I would rather see Dre. I get he got cooked last year. Just give him some safety help over the Something top. Something new. Something new. It, I just 100%. know what's going to happen if Dante Johnson's out there. I've seen it so many times. Yeah, um, I mean, definitely concerned about depth, but I feel like some of that stuff gets a little bit overblown. There are not enough good corners in the entire in in the entire league. The the Niners had one of their best ones go down, but Mosley's back and. With the exception of that horrible last drive when, when you're in prevent defense and Fred tried to bait Rodgers and they're just playing 15 yards off, I thought that they did an okay job, especially with Norman going down and you got to throw Dante Johnson in on, on Devontae Adams and then you're starting other corners, a fifth-round rookie. 
like I thought that that they did pretty well. Safeties played okay, nothing awesome, but like I didn't think that other guys on the defense played so well, and it was the corners l- letting them down. The Packers were able to run the ball. Um, that kind of speaks to the earlier point that nobody played awesome, but the Niners still had a chance to win the game, um, which makes me excited about the team going forward. I think that's a huge point. You look back on the Eagles game, you look at how, how bad offensively they were, and they still win the game. And the defense was the one that really – I mean, the defense kept them in the Packers game. People don't want to look at it and say that, but look at the defensive, like, their stops. They stopped – they held the Packers to a field goal when they were down by, what was it, three points? No. They, they were like – it was a close game. I think they are down by one or something. They held them to a field goal. Then the Niners fumble – in like in, at midfield, and then they hold them to the field a field goal again, and then the Niners come back and score, have a long drive, and then that's when like the melt and happened. the fourth down stop earlier in the game too. Yeah, the fourth the down line. stop was huge. Huge stuff that people are freaking out because Adams had two hundred yards and he had sixty yards on the final drive. Like like defense Did played he have pretty yards? well. He probably had like one seventy five. Like he he had he, a ton. He hit a lot of yards on like twelve catches. So people look at him and they're like, "Why aren't they they guarding him, dude? It's hard. That dude is a top three receiver in in the entire league. He's lining up in the slot. What do you want us to do? Like he's he's gonna get his. And the Niners defense put them in a position to win. They weren't able to close it out, but against Aaron Rodgers, against Devontae Adams, I was I was pretty impressed. And though it didn't end out awesome, I thought it was a pretty positive showing. And even though D'Amico is going to get flamed a little bit this week. It's probably good for this Niners defense as a whole, who struggled at the end of that Lions game, came back, looked really good against the Eagles. Um, and now after getting flamed this week, I hope that they walk into Seattle with a chip on their shoulder and Russ does not cook. I think there's a chance. I, I definitely do. like Because their defense has looked good. Their defenses look good, except for a couple moments where they completely melted down. And that's the problem. Now, the other thing about those moments, guess who was on the field in both of them? <laughs> um, you know. But I think that it's one of those things like you had two starting corners go down in the middle of the game. So if the secondary struggles, we know why. Like we should all go secondary struggled. Makes sense. Not, oh my God, the secondary struggled, the sky is falling. It doesn't make any sense to, I mean, you have first of all, like when you have a corner sub in, most of the time that guy gets absolutely torched. That's what happened to Dante Johnson. He came in and they threw like three back shoulder balls to him. It's over and over and over. I don't know why that is in the NFL, but like, do you do you guys? I mean, everyone remembers the 2019 game. Even the Seahawks fans right now, 2019 game. They was it? Did someone go down and they just started throwing the ball down? Was it that game? Oh my gosh, which game was it? Was that the Brian Allen game? Is that is that what you're thinking? No, I'm thinking of in 2019. There was a game. Was it when Akella went down or no? When Sherman went down. I think it was Seattle. It was the Saints game. Oh uh, yeah, it was. It was the game where they hung like 50 on us. But do you or remember it, it, that it was like 45, 42 or something? It was right at the end of the game, and they go. Sherman goes out, and they bring in Mosley, and they literally threw him like four times, and they scored a touchdown. It was like, oh, well, he got absolutely cooked. <laughs> Like, he was not ready to come to this game. And that it happens a lot. So that's what happened in this game as well. You and, can't have that happen against Seattle. And it's not like Mosley's that. bad. Like, no, he's our no. starting corner now. Like, if anybody comes in, they're they're, they're going to throw at him. Regardless, like, you saw Demo, who, who started on the bench, was awesome during the first two weeks. He comes in, gets beat on a, on a, on a long, kind of like an out-and-up route, where I think, I think it was a P.I. call, actually. Kind of soft, but... Um, like, I feel like the, the quality does not matter when you come in and you're cold and they probably know that, that, that they're going to throw it at you. I obviously don't want to see Dante Johnson in there. I'm not advocating for him, but he has a tough job. And I feel like this, this sky is, is falling narrative. Isn't super fair. Um, talking about the, the Niners defensive backfield, but they have a huge test this week, and I'm super excited to see them try to slow down these two, two, three explosive Seattle receivers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, real quick but on the injury front, there's a couple guys kind of waiting to hear. I would expect Tyler Lockett to play. Kerry Hyders, you know, might not play. I think he had a concussion um, for the 49ers. 
going to really be the big one's going to be Josh Norman because if Josh Norman plays, it helps a lot. And the other big guy would be Elijah Mitchell. So those are the two guys kind of up in there for the Niners side. Elijah Mitchell playing can definitely help the run game a ton. But with all that said, I think that's going to do it real quick though. Before we go, score predictions. What's what's yours, Aiden? I'm going to see. I'm going to say low scoring. 27-21 Niners. They cover. 27-21. I'm going to say 31 to 30 Niners. I think it's close. I think that was your score last week for the Packers game. It was it was something been. similar, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close game though. I mean, and I think hopefully it's I mean, hopefully I would like to see the Niners really come out there and impose their will, but I don't I don't really expect that right now. I think that having a on the offense, it's just there's a lot of question marks right now when you're not pushing the ball downfield. It's so hard to get the run game going like that. So 31-30, that's still a lot of points. This offense really, like, you don't look at how good they perform based on points. It's more about how much of the time of the possession, like how much time of possession they have or how many carries do they have. And so it looks a little bit different. Like, if they score 30 points, their offense can still not be clicking sometimes. And they look better sometimes when they score 20 points. It's like, yeah. But they ran out the ball. They had, they had the ball for 17 minutes in the second half, or like 20 minutes in the second half. It's like, all right, yeah, the other team couldn't come back because of that. So got to see a little bit of that. Hopefully that's the case. But 31-30 is my guess. But thank you all for listening. Let us know what your score predictions are. Let us know what you're thinking about these games. What are the big matchups for you? But that's going to do it for today, and we'll talk to you very soon.